welcome back and thanks for joining me on this uh Saturday night. And uh uh and for those who may not know, oh for those who are new to the channel, please like, share and subscribe and uh spread the word. Uh for a long time I've uh, actually contemplated doing uh, a tech uh focused uh, series. So before I jump into like uh topics and the like and uh some more detail into some uh some projects I wanted to introduce myself at least to my audience. So uh my name is Kem. Um I work in the tech industry by profession. I went to Grand Valley State University and at and in college I studied computer engineering. And for those that may be wondering what is computer engineering, right? So computer engineering is really just uh a hybrid of uh electrical engineering and computer science. So in that field of uh study, you are learning about electricity and electri- uh, uh, electricity in form of electronics so confined to a smaller box rather than commercial electricity and then uh in that on that uh arm of learning you're also learning on how to like certify circuits so you're learning uh both uh, analog digital and uh how to program those circuits so then on the computer science of things you are learning um programming so from higher level programming to low level programming so then uh on the other side of those uh things you're also learning about uh hardware programming so using things like FPGAs and then for like embedded system programming you're learning microcontrollers what are they and what are their limitations so anyways if you uh stay tuned to my channel I'll talk about these things as we go through the the path of my tech series So I don't know how the text is how long it's going to be but I'm uh I'm intending maybe to like begin building um maybe a drone so my intention is that maybe to build a drone using an MSP432 and uh, why did I choose an MSP432 or an FPGA right so for those who may not know an FPGA is uh, a field programmable gateway so it's how can I explain this? So an FPGA is uh like a microcontroller on steroids. So anyways, I'll get into these topics as we flow down the path. But for now, I just want to talk about my brief history. So putting that aside, I have worked in uh, a few positions. So I worked at uh so I'm going to I'm not going to be mentioning these uh these companies by name for obvious reasons. So then I worked uh I want to say in my sophomore year I worked at an architectural firm I'll call this architectural firm X and there I was a technologist so what that means is I I mean being an intern in in any organization you are at the center of everything so while there I worked on uh I was uh, assisted I was in a, in an assistive capacity with uh, architectures architects rather and uh they would uh help us like miscellaneous work like the design of buildings or some finishing touches here and there and then at the same point i was in an assistive capacity with uh, uh electrical engineers so there we are designing commercial commercial electricity and now and uh, following compliance and code according to state and city ordinances and then i also worked uh, in a security and technology department So in those two uh departments I helped with like the security outfits of a building and uh so when I said the security outfits of a building I'm talking about designing doors what kind of doors going to a building what kind of security systems are you going to put in place are you going to have like a key fob or are you going to have a card things of that nature and then you also include like camera work right I mean what kind of cameras are you going to bid I mean what are they what's the angle I mean how high are you going to place them in the building you know things like that so I was that I was that I was at that organization for I want to say 2 years and then my co-op series started with school so then I moved into Holland into uh an automation company so at the automation company I was uh part of the controls engineers Of course I was an uh not quite an intern but I was uh they call it the, the title the official title was a co-op student. So there I'm actually doing the 
the work, uh, the programming. So there we're using ladder logic and um, we're using that to like build machines. I mean, think of the machine you'd see at like, uh, when I say like a big courier of packages. So you're programming machines to like, uh, with uh, vision sensing, of course. So you, you, you're building machines to like pick packages, make sure it's speaking the right packages and uh, put them down the, we call them downstream. So you're putting a package on the, on a conveyor belt to go to the appropriate bin for further shipment. So I did that for about a semester, so about four months, and then I was put in a different capacity. So in that other capacity, I was actually designing the, the over-the-air transfer of data. So maybe a little bit of history and context there. So in any organization, I want to say in any manufacturing uh, environment, let's say you manufacture this uh, machine so you put the hardware together, you put the purpose together, and then you do the programming to do the, auto, uh, the autonomous functions that you want it to perform. So after that, it goes through certification and it goes through safety tests and all the necessary uh, dry run testing that is needed for it to be compliant with local code and wherever it's going. So after that, you sell it to your customer. So upon delivery, it's tested and it's good to go. So then uh, after uh, designing that machine, you're responsible for the maintenance, depending on how uh, on the negotiations go between those two companies doing business together, right? So after that is completed, let's say we're responsible for machine X maintenance for X number of years. So what follows after that is if anything goes wrong or anything is not working as it is intended, then my company, the company Y that I'm working for, would have to fly a controls engineer to that location to make sure that that problem is solved and handled, that where production is not halted. Because I mean, if you know anything about working in, in a production environment, every minute, second, millisecond is there's a cost attached to it. So anyways, so this project was going to read of that need for a human body to go into company X to do the fix. So my job, I was responsible for designing a pipeline to where a person from company Y would just hit a button. And if they need be an update, a software update that needs to be sent to that machine, would automatically be sent over the air. So that was pretty exciting. So I did that and that was successful. At least the first run was good. So I don't know if they implemented it into production because I left. And uh, after that, I worked on another tech company that was uh, automotive, uh, automotive centered. So I want to say it's tier one supplier of all automotives uh, worldwide. So then there, I worked on very exciting stuff. I worked on, uh, I don't want to mention the cars, but they were just doing the, the rollout of that car and they were running into some issues. So I worked uh, on those cars from a standpoint of debugging, making sure that the code is working as it is intended, which is common, right? I mean, once you develop software, it's hard to cover every test. I mean, uh, stress testing is a big portion of it, but you test and then there's real life, right? So that was exciting. So then I worked at that company for a summer. So the way that was intended to go was like I would go into that company. And then uh, me being an intern for that summer was more so me um, uh, that was more so me interviewing for a potential permanent position, which it went well, but obviously I never landed. A, I got offered the position after my project was, was successful, but I decided to go with a different company because I mean, better options, better, better overall everything. So anyways, after I completed all my 1500 hours of on the job training, 
I graduated. And uh, yeah, I'm now working in the tech industry and it's well centered uh, towards uh, MDOT, so Michigan Department of Transportation. So it's going pretty well. And uh, so that was a quick intro by myself. And uh, if you need more specific details, I don't know how specific I can get, but I think that's a, that's a good dig at it. So anyways, I my plan today was to like showcase this piece of art that I've been building. So it's a, uh, it's a mixer, so it's an audio mix. So right now it's just a breadboarded version of an audio mixer. So this thing has two input, three inputs. So you, you actually can use this for a karaoke machine. So it's got two 3.5 millimeters inputs and it's got a microphone. It's battery powered, nine volt battery power supply. And uh, you can turn up and down the volume and really you can you can do anything you want with this put it in a box and play some music so i was going to do like a wonderful demo and uh i just show you guys how this works but my battery died but anyways i my plan is to uh maybe showcase this uh the next time i buy a battery because it's late i don't want to go out and to go look for a nine volt battery and then I, i'm gonna start building a drone so this drone is going to be pretty i'm pretty excited about this so, uh, full disclosure here, I've never built a drone before, but I have a pretty clear understanding of what I want it to look like and I, of what I want it to do. So, I'm going to build this drone using MSP430, 432 actually. So, this is a, a microcontroller that um, is made by Texas Instruments. So, I used it a lot when I was going through college. So I know that controller pretty well. And uh, yeah, and I'm gonna do this with you guys. Or maybe I'll just give you guys updates and see where I've gone. And my development language I'm gonna use is C. And it's, and it's gonna be structure C. And yeah, so pretty excited about that. But in the meantime, I'll show you guys how the circuit looks. And then when I get a battery replacement for this baby, I will share it with you and we'll play some music together. And then maybe actually mix two songs or even uh, put some voice in it. So anyways, uh, get ready for it, here it comes. And here you have it. This is the breadboard I've been building, or rather the work of art I've been putting together. As you can see, it's battery powered and uh, there's total signal coming from the nine volt uh, battery power supply. And I have uh, a big capacitor right here. And this, the purpose of this capacitor is to filter the DC signal from the total signal coming from the battery. And the reason for that is DC port, the DC portion of the signal is dirty. So then if I, if I didn't filter it from here, you would hear quite a bit of uh, static in the sound. And uh, you can see there's more, uh, there's another capacitor here which is a ceramic capacitor for the same purpose. And here, this is an operational amplifier. So it's not one, it's a collection of uh, amplifiers in there. So what this does, an op amp, AKA operational amplifier, is a powered amplifier that makes the rest of the circuit look at the circuit up to here as an ideal circuit. So anyways, I'm not gonna get too bogged down into details here. I I can talk about this circuit for days. So really it's a collection of three circuits. There's the mic circuit up here, which is connected to the input circuit. And this is the mixing circuit right here. So it mixes more like the equalizing circuit. And up here, it's actually this is the mixing circuit here and here by the blue square box here the potentiometer this is where everything gets equalized and mixed so this is the master volume so this potentiometer is really just a resistor a three-legged resistor so that what is the difference between a regular capacitor and a pot i'm glad you asked 
The only difference is the potentiometer's resistance can be varied. So think of this as a volume knob. If I turn towards the little, the little dot there, the pseudo dot, it means I'm increasing the volume. And the other way, when I'm pulling it to ground, it just means I'm reducing the volume. So I added an extra feature here per speaker. So these potentiometers are individual volume, volume levelers for the speakers. So what's the purpose of that? So maybe the purpose of that would be, hey, I just wanna to listen to this one speaker as opposed to listening to two. I can't really think of a use case where that would be pertinent, but it's just an added feature really. And the speakers are just two nine ohm speakers. And uh, they're pretty, they sound pretty okay. So here you can have three inputs and a voice. So when I mean three, two inputs with a voice, it just means that I can have Spotify, a song off of Spotify playing here, and maybe another song off of Spotify playing here, and I can mix those two songs. And on top of mixing those two songs, I can actually add my voice to it, you know? Yeah, I think this would come in handy, like, if you have, like, a classical song, uh, like the instrumental playing here and the lo-fi song playing there, and you kind of mix them together. I don't know what would be the purpose of that use case, but the capability is there. So anyways, I wanted to like uh, just do a high level showcase of what I've been working with. And uh, I was very excited to like play this tonight, but unfortunately my battery died. So anyways, I will play this the next time I make a part two and I will start building my drone. So. So once again, if you like content like this, I mean, please feel free to subscribe, share, and tell a friend or dog or a neighbor. And uh, I'm looking forward to spending more time with you guys. And talk soon. Okay, bye.